was an update of this particular topic. Thank you. Uh, my name is Eric Tyfke. I work at the Monroe County Public Defender's Office, and all I've done for 18 years is defend people that have been accused of crimes. And I also teach constitutional law. I'm well versed in how police and Congress are supposed to go, but I know that in the real world they rarely go that way. I represent Ms. Hardaway. You're familiar with that case. It drew a lot of attention and is probably going to draw some more before it concludes. I cannot, as her attorney, given our confidential relationship, go into the particulars. But what I think I'd like you to take away from this is that there are a couple of laws that the police often charge people with. These laws are drafted to be very, 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 very police friendly and very easy to prove. One of them is resisting arrest. If the police get, you have to understand, the police are human beings. They are given a tremendous amount of power. In my estimation, they are pushed out onto the street with a lot of power and not enough tact, not enough people skills, not enough worldliness. And they run almost as a pack. And the communities where they work consider them, in some instances, to be an occupying army. They don't live in the house next door. They flee out to Hamlet, and they live in the suburbs, and they come here. So human nature would dictate that they are going to view themselves as outsiders, that they're going to circle the wagons whenever anything looks inconvenient or disruptive. They're going to protect their own. Ideally, there would be some incentive program where the police would heck, give them a house. They agree to live there for 10 years and work on the police force. I think that wouldn't be a bad deal. They would live in the community. They would get to know their neighbors. They would get to see how people are treated. They would get to be around people of color that don't look just like them all the time. And we would have far fewer encounters like the Hardaway encounter, like the war encounter, if there was more of an integration between the people pleasing our communities and the residents of those communities. You take well-meaning people, human beings, and you put them in a situation where they only are in communities in a pack for limited hours, and they're revved up, and they go out there, and they view everyone else as the other, and themselves as the do-gooders, when there really is a much there isn't the distinction that there should be. There should be far less of a distinction between people that live there and people that come there. Ideally, they would be there at night. They would lay their heads in the community. They would know their neighbors. I'd like to see some change in that regard. I'm probably, you know, it's probably a long way away. This strikes me as a good idea. There are a couple laws, however, that police charge people with regularity. You mentioned disorderly conduct. I've been charged with that. Uh, it's very amorphous. It's a catch-all. It's a, this doesn't strike me as right, and I'd really like to make this person pay in some respect, disorderly conduct. Sometimes these cases get to court, and the judge looks at it and says, I'm dismissing it. But the police have accomplished one goal already. They've arrested you. You've gone to court. You've, had, you've been embarrassed. You might have missed work. You might have lost your job or missed a job interview or missed an appointment somewhere. So already a chunk has been taken out of you, even though it was resolved in your favor. The police taught you a lesson, or so they think. There's another statute called resisting arrest. When the police get any pushback, any resistance, any voicing of, I know my rights, that is not something the police should be receptive to that. If this person says, I know my rights. Don't touch me. Don't look at my backpack. No, you can't search. I don't want to give you my identification. They should be glad. There's a citizen that understands the Constitution. They're charged with enforcing the laws. The Constitution is a law. But they get their back up too often when a citizen says, I'm not going to succumb to your authority. Questioning authority is going to get you in trouble as opposed to out of trouble. That's not the way things should work. The resisting arrest statute, that's a crime, resisting arrest. Disorderly conduct is a violation. It's like a speeding ticket. For resisting arrest is when the police are trying to arrest you and you resist. It doesn't require you to strike an officer. You can pull away. Hey, what are you doing grabbing me? Class A misdemeanor. Get up to a year in jail on that. All right? 
Now think about this one. That's a very police-friendly statute. Right? The police have a very powerful union. These unions get together. They go to Albany, they press lawmakers, and the laws come out that are very police-friendly. Right? If you work in a deli and someone assaults you, it's a misdemeanor. If you're a police officer and someone assaults you, it's a class D felony. They become, through their lobbying efforts, this protected class of extra citizens who, if they get a hangnail, someone's got to pay dearly with a felony record and a prison sentence. Someone in another occupation, well, too bad for them. All the person that assaults them can be prosecuted for is a misdemeanor. This assault sentence statute is very, very scary. Resisting arrest, like I said, if they're going to arrest you and you offer any resistance, pulling away will do it. We're not talking about getting involved in a big run. Assault second degree. The police are performing a lawful arrest for an offense committed in their presence. If it's a little offense, they have to see it. If it's a misdemeanor or above, they can get information from another source and then come and make an arrest. If it's a lawful arrest, and the police officer is, through the person's efforts, injured, <clears throat> it's a class D felony. The level of injury can be disturbingly petty. It could be a bruise. It can be an injury that no one sees or feels but the officer. If the officer looks fine, but can convince a jury that they suffered some pain, class D felony. You can violate that statute and be convicted of a class D felony an officer says, stop, I'm arresting you, sir, and you run. And you've got a two-block lead on the officer. And he falls and cuts his knee. Assault second degree. <laughs> so, Mr. Dyer's words ring true in part to me when he says, don't bother putting up a fight. You will get charged with a felony. They will put you on the defensive. And you'll be prosecuted by the DA's office, who carries water to the police at almost every time they can. The police say jump. The prosecutor's office says, how high? Mm -hmm. They don't look at this and say, well, I believe the officer was in the wrong, they overreacted. They go to the officer and say, what would you like me to do about this? What offer would you like me to make? How hard should I go after this person? This is what happens down there. I see this, and I've seen it for 17 years. So resistance, I wouldn't recommend it. You're going to feel like you want to. You're going to feel like it's fair. And it might be fair. And they might be wrong. But it'll get you a beating. It'll get you chased. It'll get you arrested. It'll get you a felony charge. And they will go after you for that felony charge. Brenda Hardaway is facing seven years in prison. And her trial, they do not need to prove she struck this officer. That law is drafted so police friendly that all they have to prove is that they were making an authorized arrest. And that Brenda Hardaway resisted, and as a result, the officer was hurt. That's all they have to prove. They don't have to prove she intended it. Remember the guy running to block lead? It doesn't have to be intentional. You need the arrest, you need the injury, and that's the end of it. You can get up to seven years in prison for assault second degree. So Mr. Geiger's words, I would pay attention to the whole, you know, there's a portion of them there that I, I can fully get behind. Uh, it is, it's degrading, it's alarming. Many of you had interactions with I was not surprised to learn you know the exact date, time, and place of that. It is not not a big deal. And it would be sad. I have clients who say, well, yeah, the police just pulled me over and strip search me. You know how that goes. How sad is it that it's come to the point where that is something that you can just expect walking down the street in some communities? It's disgusting. I hear it all the time. And you shouldn't be used to that. But the fact that a person's used to it tells you what they've been put through. And it's worse than that. You know, the pulling of the pants down, it happens. I have heard my clients tell me stories for 18 years, thousands and thousands of police encounters. Of course, some are BS. Of course. Of course, some are exaggeration. But there are too many consistent stories for me to dismiss even half of them. You see too many people who don't know each other telling you the different things about the same police force all the time. The same officers. And yes, you will see the same officer's names coming up over and over and over. And I, think I work in an office with a lot of attorneys. And we hear certain officer's names, we roll our eyes, and they keep coming up and up and up. And judges sometimes, it gets to the attention of some judges. And they'll roll their eyes. I don't want them to roll their eyes. I want them to throw cases out, to toss evidence out. I like the police officers, the bad apples. It would 
be a credit to the police force if they would publicly weed out some bad apples. So the black and I'm not suggesting for a minute they sacrifice a good cop to the mob. I'm suggesting that they know who the bad apples are. These names don't continually come up. There are officers in this community that judges, judges are politicians. They don't ever like doing anything that's not police friendly. And some of them are forced, given what they see, sometimes to call out certain police officers and say, you lied to me at this hearing. And it happened a couple of times just last summer. Two different judges called two different teams of officers. Liars. They lied under oath in that courtroom in order to try to get the judge to keep the case going and not throw the evidence out. That was clearly the result of an unlawful police action. These officers, to my knowledge, and the names consistently come up, are still on the police force. They're still there. Now, I don't know what's going on internally, but I still see police reports coming in with their names on them, so they're working there in some capacity. They're still there. There are police officers that should be weeded out. And I know there's a powerful police union, Chief. I know that. I know you're caught between a rock and a hard place. I know this isn't the most easy thing to sit here and hear people haranguing your office. I would not want to be in your shoes. It's a very difficult place to be in the middle. The police has a very powerful union, and they are going to fight tooth and nail against any, any even modest reprimand of an officer. And I, I know that's what's happening. And I know that there are very good cops, and I, I think that the good cops don't step up, but they wouldn't be terribly upset if some of the bad ones were weeded out. So I don't think they like looking the other way their entire careers. I don't think they would have to with some of the some of the obvious bad apples, and I, I know the names would get weeded out. It would be a credit to the force. It would, it would give the force the, you know additional credibility, and the force does have credibility. There are police forces that are a disaster in this country, and I, I wouldn't suggest that ours is one of them. Um, but there is a danger that it could continue to shed credibility unless some obvious public measures are taken to counter some of these things that are obviously definitely happening and happening repeatedly when it comes to certain officers. What I'd like you to take away from what I'm saying is that I'm representing Ms. Hardaway. The problem we've got with Ms. Hardaway's case is that, believe it or not, the prosecution loves that videotape. And they love it because they look at the tape and they look at the law book. I see someone getting mistreated. I see someone who is pregnant and he pushed against the car. And I imagine how hard I would put it to avoid my belly getting pressed against the car. Trial, the only question the jury's going to be asked is, and believe me, no matter how hard I try, it will not be a jury that looks a lot like my client. Thank you. All they're going to be asked is, were they making an authorized arrest, and were they injured during the arrest? If the jury finds yes to those two things, Brenda Hardaway will be convicted. And that's because that law is drafted far too friendly, far too anti-citizen. So, that's the lay of the land for, from where I stand. I could certainly stick around and answer any questions you have about police citizen encounters. I live it every day, I teach it every day, uh, what they can and can't do in any circumstance. The best advice I can give you in the amendment I think you should focus the most on uh, is amend the Sixth Amendment, the Right to Counsel Amendment, because if you want to <coughs> shut down police interrogation, the words you need to say, you need to teach everyone you know to say. It's not, I don't want to talk. It's not, don't search it. Although, I recommend you don't know, agree to a search. No, I'm not going to agree to a search. You can even decline to give ID. You can decline to give your name. You need not say anything in response to any police question at any time. You may choose to give your name, but you need not do that. But if you see someone going into custody, especially for a big offense, there's going to be an effort made to talk to that person and elicit a statement that they're going to use against the person in trial. You have two rights that they read you. The Miranda warnings really are two different rights. The right to be in silent, the right to counsel. It's a right to counsel, that's the silver bullet to end any interrogation. I want a lawyer. The person who's being arrested has to say it. You can say it for a juvenile and, and invoke the juvenile's right to counsel. Don't be wishy-washy about it. Of course, we'll look at, gee, do you think I need an attorney? Or I'd like to maybe call my attorney. They'll say, well, we don't understand what you were talking about. 
They'll look for every way to say that you didn't ask for an attorney. So the words are, I want an attorney. And then, like Mr. Guy just said, say nothing more until you see your attorney. They cannot even, if you say, hey, I'd like to continue talking, talk to you unless the attorney's there. So very important words, I want an attorney. That'll end any interrogation. Because once you or someone else goes into the police station, it's just you and them. No one's going to be filming it. And they're going to try to get a statement out of you. Now, I couldn't say more, and I'm going to wrap up. Uh, I would agree, Mr. Geiger, it pays in the long run to cooperate. If you don't, you could get roughed up. The people around you could pay a price. You could end up injured. The people around you could end up injured. I recommend that you go quietly because there's more of them, they're more organized, they are more powerful, and the way you fight this is you fight it in court. It's not fair, it's degrading, it's hard to bite your tongue, and go quietly, but it will be better in the end if you do. Thank you.
So the question is, and then when we had the press conference, then he writes an article attacking us, the clergy, saying that we have misplaced anger. <laughs> this guy has lost his mind. So what that tells you about the sorry state of the police department, when they elect somebody to represent them on the locust club who has violated the rights of 